Hi there, this is Jason from English Raven, and this is the second uh, template or example from Open English, uh, which is a series of materials that I'm releasing on my blog uh, in PDF format as well as uh, compatible open source format in Microsoft Word or in Open Office. You can also work with these documents. And this one's called Take a Seat, and as you can see, we've got a picture of uh, a clinic scene with waiting chairs here. Now before I get into the activities and how they're structured here, um, you know, the, the one question you may have at this point is, oh, why a topic like clinic, you know? How, um, how interesting could that possibly be? Um, I've done it deliberately because I think um, there's sometimes too much emphasis in materials uh, design and content uh, selection on being ultra interesting, ultra, um, you know, bizarre sometimes. Um, and, you know, it's sort of like this jumping the shark technique of making, seeing how far we can go to get the learners possibly interested in something. Um, but I think in learning English is also a lot about the practical things. And I think learners do respond well if they get an even balance of quite interesting and novel th stuff to talk about and to explore. Um, in combination with very practical stuff, useful things. Um, I think learners get quite motivated when they realize that they're learning English that they can actually use and that can be used for some practical purposes. And I think that, you know, your ability to um, go and see a doctor or go and see some sort of health, um, uh, some sort of um, a, do a doctor situation or a health situation, it's very important that they have some of that basic language um, and that capacity to deal with those situations. So this not, might not be a, a topic that everyone's sort of going, wow, this is so cool and interesting. Um, it really made me think a lot. Um, it could be more of along the lines of, yeah, this is something in real life we really do need to sort of get a grip on. So that's why I've chosen this idea of the clinic. Okay. Um, it doesn't need to be the pre-assessment anesthetic clinic. Um, you know, it could just be the general idea of a clinic or a hospital, um, you know, or a, a general doctor's surgery of some sort. Um, now, if you saw the first Open English lesson material, you'll uh, quickly cotton on to the fact that this, this take a seat material, the activity boxes, have been done exactly the same except in reverse. So in the uh, previous version, these two parts came first and then this was the follow-up. Well, now we're putting that the other way around. Now, um, what I've found in over many, many years of uh, teaching and using my own materials with learners is that they, all, they do really like variety, but they also do like a, a, a bit of rhythm. Um, so I don't like to take in the exact same sequence two lessons in a row in terms of what we actually do in activities. But it's good if we can take in some very similar activities and reorder them in some way. And whereas the previous lesson was a, a very uh, careful build up from words and sentences to, to a, a text of some sort, now we're actually starting with the text. Um, and I might apply this slightly differently. Uh, again, I, I'd probably give the choice to the learners. You could write uh, a personal experience to do with this idea of clinic or an imaginary uh, situation with the clinic. It, could, it might, doesn't have to be just about them. Again, they could pair up with one or two other students and create a dialogue together based on this situation. And they could write it in here. Um, and again, we might share some of these um, these efforts by reading aloud or performing dialogues aloud for the rest of the class and we do a bit of board work we talk about some of the the good language they've used and how that we, we could explore patterns of language that emerge from that as well as language and how to make it better um, we could be writing a lot of those notes up on the whiteboard and this is a space for learners to write down anything from that board work that interests them or they they find relevant and um, you know they notice it and want to take further notice of it. So this is the group board workspace here. Now, after they've done their text or their dialogue here, and we've had a look at it and discussed it as a group, um, in the previous lesson material I had here that they were going to write three questions that they then apply to the class who listened to that. That's one way of doing it. Another way we could do it is that um, 
instead of the, the authors of this text writing questions, they could pass their material to a classmate who reads their text or their dialogue and writes questions about it. Like, for example, you know, um, you know why were you there? Um, were you scared? What happened after that? Whatever. Um, so they can actually interact and react to whatever it was that was composed here. Um, and then they can hand it back to the original student who attempts to answer these questions. That's one way you could use that, that box there um, to make, again, that interaction. And again, the teacher could be listening, uh, wandering around, making some notes and corrections and suggestions. They could be done on the spot with each group of students, or they could be done up on the whiteboard again for that emergent language. So that happens first, and then based on that, um, instead of coming up with words just quickly in relation to the picture, we can now ask them to come up with um, some key words based on what they did on the first page. You know, it could be what we could ask them to say choose four of the most important words from this text or dialogue and write them in here. Again, as per the first lesson, we could share those words as a group and explore them a little bit. And then we could have the students write new sentences with these words not the same as the sentences that they were here. Um, so again, we're taking one key item of Lexus um, within, within this general theme. Uh, we've applied it once on the first page in a text or a dialogue, and now we're going to ask them to expand that and do it in a different situation or a different application. And that's just encouraging them to you know, flex their language muscles and, and, and try applying words and sentence patterns to new situations, new ideas. Um, so that's what we could do for that section there. Again, we could share our sentences, uh, take some notes on the whiteboard, explore some language patterns and, and rules and vocabulary up on the whiteboard. There's space here for the students to take notes. Now, C is what was on the other worksheet, um, B. And in, this, in the previous lesson, what we did was we had dictation. Well, we could do the exact same thing here. We could um, wander around, um, take, um, pick up each student's work, or you know, six of the students, one by one, pick up the work, choose a sentence, read it out loud. Students write that student's name, and try to, we try to dictate the sentences. That's what we could do with this, which is what I suggested in the first um, uh, first lesson material, or we could do it a little bit differently. Um, we could hand this completely over to the students and they do it in pairs now. Um, that they, you could be as creative and innovative as you like here. You could get them to say, uh, pair up, read four of their sentences to each other and they attempt to dictate those and put them down. And these two sentences here, right, could either be with one other student or two other students elsewhere in the room, or um, we could ask the student who's uh, reading aloud here to make up two new sentences on the spot and uh, in relation to this theme, and then the other student actually tries to note that down. Now that's great because even though the language might be all over the place and there may be major problems with it, well the other student will attempt to catch that and then they can discuss together and use this space to explore that language, explore you know, how it could be made better. And this could be something that could be shared with the teacher as they're going around the room or with the whole group. You know, we could say, oh, we, we, we had this sentence here and um, we're not sure how good that was as a sentence. Um, we write that up on the board and we explore it as a group. So that's another way we could use that part there. Now there's also a third open page here. Um, for those of you who want to go on and do even more with this. But the idea of open English is fairly... Um, when you're using emergent language and board work and, and uh, interacting with the learner's own language, it tends to take a fair bit of time. Um, and the idea of open English is sort of quick one one hour lessons or 45 minute lessons. So I don't usually try to overdo it and there's only so long you can talk about the clinic before it starts to become quite boring. So, um, you know, I'd like to be sort of fairly uh, short and swift with it. Um, it. Depends on how much interest the learners are showing in this. They may not show a lot of interest in this general topic, but they may show some interest in the language and the exploration of the language. Um, just going back to the first part of the lesson here, um, 
what I find is normally the case when I've used this kind of stuff is that the most useful technique to do here is to have them write a dialogue and in almost all cases the learners um, elect to have someone coming into the clinic and talking to a receptionist and or talking to the doctor and you know we get some pretty good uh, scripts here and I find that um, across all the levels the learners have a lot of trouble getting this language right and getting these um, these these interactions between receptionist and, and visitor and doctor and patient right and it's always good to explore it and really look at it and, and what the ins and outs of it um, now you could do something else with this material um, and you're thinking oh goodness there's you've already told us how to use it just shut up well another thing you could do here is a live reading and that is as a group we make a text um, and I've explained how to do live reading on the blog um, sort of live writing live reading and writing um, if you look up live reading in the search box on the blog you will see some pretty vivid examples of how I do live reading but it's basic the basic idea is that as a group we generate a text in relation to this theme together and it could be either a dialogue we generate together or it could be a, a, a text of some sort um, it could be a story like a narrative it could be an expository general text uh, it could be all sorts of stuff and it's that's how it depends on how we manipulate the group and and what's going on in that classroom setting but that can be good uh, in terms of making it a whole group activity which again we then explore some of these language patterns on the side the great thing here is because the teacher is mediating this live reading text and sort of coordinating it then the language is coming out quite accurate um, and, and the students are getting a very accurate model uh, of language in use. So that's one of the big bonuses if you're worried about um, that. Uh, and again, we could uh, have the students write down extra questions and ask them to the whole group, the t to the teacher or in pairs. Um, and it, then we could go on and do those activities that I suggested. So it's like the other lesson plan upside down with some subtle differences because we don't want to just do everything exactly the same as we did it uh, in that other material, especially if they follow on from each other. But we do need to explore sort of more open-end approaches at the start, becoming more specific as well as starting with quite specific and simple and building up to more open. And I think learners really benefit from both approaches. So something for you to consider in your teaching methodology and in your materials design. Uh, remember that there are open source versions of this available on the blog and you can use any, you can delete any of these text boxes and replace them with whatever you like if you want to actually pre-provide any of the dialogue or text or if you just don't like the look of this text box you can just uh, get rid of it um, as well as this line here and you could you'd have something that goes more like that so you have my permission and blessing to butcher what I've made here and make something completely new I just would like it if you could attribute uh, the design and the idea back to myself and the English Raven site that would be appreciated so I hope you got some ideas from take a seat and good luck with your content writing and materials design and your emergent language teaching methodology.